Hi folks, uh, hope you are doing great. I'm Prabhas Silvadhana from WSO2. Uh, for this video today, we have Kasun in the series. Uh, Kasun is the one actually who uh, co-authored the book Microservices for the Enterprise with me. Uh, so here is the, the book. Uh, the book was released uh, in uh, November last year. Uh, this is in fact Kasun's uh, second book. Uh, his uh, first book uh, is beginning WSO2 ESB, uh, once again published by uh, APRES. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the show, Kasun. Uh, so please uh, uh, tell us about you. Like, I know that you've been with WSO2 for, for a long time and leading uh, ESP. So tell us about you, like your contribution uh, to the integration space and how, 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 you, how you got here. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Robert. Uh, yes, uh, I've been working for WSO2 for uh, nearly 10 years now, and uh, I got the opportunity to work for WS2 ESP, which is the main uh, integration product that we were offering. So, uh, so as part of the contribution to the integration space, I've been uh, closely following and contributing to most of the open source communities related to integration and working closely with a lot of customers uh, in the US and across the world. And, and later, uh, especially during the last couple of years, I was mostly contributing to the microservices and cloud native communities and uh, uh, worked closely with most of those communities. Yeah, and, and you also uh, lead the microservices uh, meetup in Silicon Valley, right? So can you please uh, tell us about that too? Yeah, so uh, we actually, because of the uh, trend towards microservices, we uh, started a vendor neutral and a technology neutral meetup group in the Bay Area. Uh, so the main objective of that meetup group is to kind of a build a community around microservices technologies and so that uh, we don't really promote any technology or a vendor, but uh, it's kind of an open forum to all the community members to join and share their experience and actually we had quite a good uh, speakers in the past like high profile speakers during last uh, several meetups yeah and and if you go back to the book uh, the idea of the book came from Kasun uh, Kasun is the one uh, who wanted to write this book and he's the one who initially worked on the proposal uh, came up with the uh, table of content why do you think, Kasun, like uh, there are many uh, books on microservices? So why do you yeah. think, uh, uh, why, why, why actually you wanted to write another book on microservices? Yeah, so, uh, so when I started learning microservices, I think it's back in 2015, uh, there, there were a lot of books written, there are actually a couple of books written on microservices, but they were mostly uh, covering the fundamentals. And, mostly the theoretical aspect of microservices. And uh, even my colleagues and even most of the enterprises were kind of struggling to understand how you can apply those principles to a uh, enterprise as well as how to, even for a, for a new project, how to apply those uh, concepts in practice. So then uh, back in 2015, I wrote a blog covering almost all the aspect of microservices architecture. It's kind of a uh, overview of the book that we have uh, written last year. So that became so popular and, uh, and, and that was one of the main motivations uh, that I thought of writing a book. And then, uh, then, I, uh, then I think Prabhat came up with this, uh, his blog on uh, security patterns for uh, microservices, which is kind of a comprehensive overview on all the possible security scenarios. So that's why we, we both met and started talking about uh, writing a book covering and filling these, covering these aspects and filling the void that we have in the space. Yeah, and, and you are coming from a very solid background uh, in ESB. In fact, your first book uh, is also on ESB. Yeah. So what's happening to the ESB? What's the role of ESB playing uh, in a microservices uh, architecture? Yeah. Yeah, it's very funny that because uh, most of the ESB, uh, as a product manager of a ESB product and writing a microservices book is kind of a funny thing. And uh, because... Uh, Usually people don't want to move into the microservices ESP because uh, it actually fosters the elimination of ESP, right? But uh, I try to be more uh, uh, 
when the neutral and technology neutral and try to see how you can adapt microservices uh, and eliminate ESP. So uh, what, what my personal feeling is uh, ESP is still used by many organizations, but when you're adapting microservices, uh, you need to eliminate that central layer of integration, right? But uh, when you do that, uh, there are a lot of capabilities that are offered from the ESP layer. Now, those capabilities has to be implemented as part of the services that you're writing, right? So things such as uh, message transformation, protocol transformation, content-based routing, uh, even security, observability, service discovery, all those things has to be part of your uh, service code. So that actually uh, is becoming challenging because uh, as part of the service development, you need to take uh, additional uh, actions on catering those needs while offering the business capability offered from your service. So uh, in a nutshell, ESP, as a central integration hub is going away, but those capabilities are now being uh, dispersed across different services that you are writing. <clears throat> then like, how about the service mesh? Like how, how you compare service mesh with an ESB? Like is there a, uh, uh, is there a pattern uh, or uh, some kind of a, a practice you see both the ESB and uh, service mesh uh, coexist in, in a microservices deployment? Yeah, so actually there were, there are some uh, misconception on this concept, Prabhat, because uh, some people uh, think that uh, e uh, service mesh is a distributed ESP, which is wrong, right? So if you look at the purpose of creating the service mesh, uh, now uh, when people started moving into uh, microservices, uh, they have to implement all the ESP capabilities from scratch. So in particular things such as service resiliency, security, observability, uh, those things has to be implemented as part of the services that they are developing. And those things actually came, uh, now when we are building multiple uh, microservices with different technologies, you need to repeat the same, uh, basically duplicate the same effort across different languages. So that's why, uh, that's why service mesh came into the picture as a, infrastructure, inter-service communication infrastructure to offload some of the uh, non-business logic related logic into the uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So so that uh, you will only focus on the business logic and underlying infrastructure, which is running on top of Docker Kubernetes and uh, a service mesh such as Istio is providing other capabilities. But if you look at the capabilities that are of that were offered from the ESP, uh, that is a mix of all the resiliency and all the network communication plus business capabilities like business uh, like uh, type mapping, content-based routing. Now, the business logic has to be anyway implemented as part of your services uh, logic. So still like uh, the the message transformation, uh, those stuff will uh, go into an ESP, they will they will not come to the service mesh, right? That, is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, yeah, so message transformation and all those things will be part of your service and service mesh is providing the infrastructure and, uh, and again, we won't see any ESP in the picture. Yeah. So it's going away. So when you take like a, a Kubernetes deployment where you have multiple pods, so your services running in each pod, uh, let's say if you follow a service mesh pattern, then you have uh, Envoy running in each pod uh, with the uh, service itself. In, in that sort of a deployment, uh, where is the ESP? Uh, in that sort of a deployment, ESP is no longer there, but uh, the capabilities that are they are that that where they are part of uh, as the ESP is now within the services logic. Okay. So when you are writing a microservice, that means you are writing whatever the content-based routing and content transformation logic as part of the services business logic. And only business logic goes to the service, and all the network-related communications such as circuit breakers are provided from the service mesh. Then, then how about the API management? In, in a traditional deployment, we see uh, you have the microservice deployment, 
then uh, at the front like at the edge uh, facing the the consumer applications you have an api gateway all the request uh, to the microservices deployment they are routed uh, via the uh, api gateway yeah what would happen to the the api gateway in the microservices deployment yeah so api gateway uh, actually came into the picture when uh, esb was used in most of the enterprises right so you had the uh, esb layer and on top of that uh, we used the api gateway or api management layer as the facade to the existing uh, services now with the introduction of microservices still you want to expose some part of your services uh, to the external uh, consumers as a managed service so that requirement is still there so uh, what we can do is we can uh, select the services, select the microservices that you want to expose to your consumers and expose them through the API gateway or API management layer. Now, uh, using this kind of a central gateway layer can uh, might uh, go well, uh, might go well in certain conditions, but uh, if you want to independently scale the traffic that is coming for a to a given service you may have to have some kind of segmentation at the gateway layer as well so that's where this micro gateway concept uh, uh, is coming into the picture where you independently scale your apis based on this micro gateway instances and all these micro gateway instances are controlled by a central control plane now uh, with that also no service mesh is also in the picture now it's becoming a bit confusing on uh, the differences between the service mesh and the api gateway and what's the difference between the api management layer and the control plane so there are a couple of patterns that we can use which actually we explained it in detail in our book so i thoroughly recommend you to have a look and see what whether those patterns will uh, suit your use cases yeah i'm looking at chapter seven uh, integrating microservices uh, there we talk about uh, anti patterns for microservices integration yes. uh, monolithic api gateway for integrating microservices yeah. integrating a microservice with an esp mm -hmm. then using homogeneous technologies to build all your microservices yeah. and also some other microservice integration patterns yeah. so most of the stuff that you mentioned uh, are explained in detail in the book uh, we also have chapter 9 uh, which talks about uh, service service mesh in detail and then chapter 10 talks about apis events and streams yeah. uh, the book book has like comprehensive coverage on uh, the stuff that you uh, explained mm -hmm. uh, do you want to add anything like uh, what else uh, we cover in the book and like what, what was your objective in writing this book uh, what's the message or they like who, who are the readers who should be interested in reading the book so I will I will uh, probably go through some of the unique uh, features of the book. So first of all, this book is a fully vendor and technology neutral book. So the, this is not a book that is backed by a particular vendor or anything. It's a completely it's, it's purely our personal uh, perception on about the technology, as well as we are not limited to a given technology. Uh, such as like uh, using Spring Boot to build all your microservices. We, all these examples, etc., are not really uh, limited to a given technology. You can use those concepts across multiple languages and frameworks. But there are certain examples based on Spring Boot as well. Uh, but the other, the other unique thing is the uh, all the concepts are explained with a uh, practical use case, uh, and most of the examples can be uh, try out. By yourself and and uh, and unlike most of the existing books uh, because uh, things concepts such as service mesh uh, came into the picture during last couple of years so we have a dedicated chapter on service mesh technology and uh, we even go further into service mesh versus api gateway type of uh, discussions which actually emerged uh, during 2018 so there are a lot of uh, leading edge technologies that we have covered in the book. And I recently had a look at uh, the number of uh, CNCF projects, Cloud Native Computing Foundation project that we have covered. Actually, we have covered almost all the top level CNCF project in various aspect of microservices development uh, in our book. So there are a lot of uh, such unique features, but 
but uh, I highly recommend you to have a look at those uh, things and give your feedback. Great, yeah. Thank you very much, Kasun, and hope this interview uh, would be helpful to anyone who is interested in reading this book and uh, hope we passed uh, enough information. And if you have already bought this book and already read this book, uh, please uh, please leave some comments on Amazon, Goodreads, or anywhere that you can uh, talk about books. Thank you very much for joining.